Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Black Tub Bootlegs. Today's episode, Grid Striker. Returning to our vehicle series, we'll be looking at yet another Attack Track and Landshark inspired bootleg. While Mattel's vehicles were always well designed with interesting gimmicks, some vehicles like the Landshark were simply sculptures, lacking a finer level of functionality. In this case, the tank treads are simply immobile. In 1981, Echo Toys was on top of the treaded vehicle game with a fully loaded commander's tank. This decked out tank would serve as a solid base for their 1984 space fantasy vehicle, the Grid Striker. The original tank shell was completely abandoned and a wonderful boxy body was set in its place. The designs loaded with classic 80s concepts of the future, tinted windows, sharp corners, random rib tubing and wiring, lights, and various gold applications. Similar to Mattel's toys where surface detail isn't sculpted in, stickers were applied to spice up flat areas. The original box is loaded with colorful photos and text clearly depicting an overflow of features. There are some wonderfully hasty custom figures depicted on the panels as well. A spaghetti brain clawful, G.I. Joe short fuse with a turn signal for a face, and a shovel jawed Stratos with hubcap armor. Our first heavily advertised features have to do with seating. The front windscreen has a nice design but the hinge range is very limited and the visor easily lifts away when not desired. While the interior seat does work well with 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, the screen is a bit tricky to close. There's a very tiny boxed out region to accommodate the figure's head. Stepping up to 4.5 inch figures, the windscreen doesn't work at all but the figure sits in just fine. Stepping up to 6 inch figures, things get a little silly but no worse than some Masters of the Universe seating. The main cockpit area can be scaled up and down by lifting away a black seat shell. The seat is locked into place with a smart tab and slot design. The black seat easily holds 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, but there would be a battle for elbow room with two slightly larger figures. Stepping up to 6 inches, the figure is not terribly off scale and just squeaks in. Our third seating location is the back hatch. Like the front canopy, the clear tinted cover screen is barely attached to the vehicle, requiring only a tiny tap to send it flying. The vertical hatch easily accommodates any scale figure. The fourth and final seating option is the rear bucket seat. The hinged cover screens are solidly designed, cleanly hinged, and function as a footrest for the figures. Like the front canopy, the three and three quarter inch figures work well. Four and a half is okay, six inches is uncomfortable and unsafe. Overall, the amount of seating on this vehicle is ridiculous, but the attempt to diversify makes sense, spreading the usefulness of this vehicle across all the most popular lines of the time. Our second advertised feature is swappable parts, which are mostly decorative. The components are neatly sculpted and made of a fairly strong black plastic. While there are only a handful of pieces, the ability to move parts is certainly a fun idea and a gentle introduction to kit bashing. It's fun to allow kids to feel like they're actually customizing the toy. If you haven't noticed by now, the Grid Striker does look familiar, sharing a low profile and front arm similar to that of LJN's Thunder Tank. However, the Grid Striker was released in 1984, one year before the Thundercats hit screens and shelves in 1985. Eventually, Eurosteel of Argentina exploited the Grid Striker's appearance by licensing the Thundercats name and labeling this bootleg product the Thunder Tank. There appear to be several Eurosteel Thunder Tank products out there. Returning to our Grid Striker features, the articulated claw arm moves well but does slip now and then. The riveted elbow joint is loose and will certainly become worse over time. I expected some kind of gripping spring action within the golden claw but there's nothing. Overall not a very functional accessory but it does look the part. The tank tread mechanism is nicely designed with a ribbed drive wheel in the back and decorative wheels running all the way to the front. The tank easily hits the 40 degree incline depicted on the box because it's actually a 20 degree angle. Still this is a respectable climb and the tank can certainly handle more of an incline. The box boasts 6 way remote control which is basically an analog joystick setup. There are 2 red fire buttons that control the blaster lights. One fire button is a remnant of the original tank turret turning feature. The directional controls are very responsive and easily work as described. The independent track control is pretty powerful too when maneuvering. The side blaster design is a nice nod to R2-D2, the red outer transparent dome is very clean, and the inner blue insert makes the light-up feature even more interesting. The ability to rotate the cannon is also a nice touch, very smooth action. The military style handset that this comes with easily opens and holds 3D cells to power all of the features, and it has a nice long flexible cord. Overall the Grid Striker is an excellent remote control vehicle loaded with respectable features drenched in 80s design. While we're talking treads, we might as well dissect the Grid Striker's budget sibling, the Silver Striker. While yet another tank-based mod, the Silver Striker body is a unique low-seated space fantasy design with aggressive guns and striking colors. The body sits low to the ground, giving the vehicle a strong, stable appearance. The use of black, red, blue, and yellow against the silver base really makes the colors pop. Similar to the Grid Striker, the silver box art depicts the vehicle's numerous features flanked with nice airbrushed graphics, another clawful custom, and modded Star Wars figures. 
Our first and only flexible seating area is the commander's cockpit. It easily accommodates three and three quarter inch to four and a half inch figures. Once the black liner is removed, six inch figures easily fit. The headlight dashboard combo can't be rotated all the way back when the cockpit liner is in place. Once rotated into its display screen position, the large headlight has two screw holes in the back. It'd be nice to have something covering this. The Halleck headlight is still very intimidating though with a red hatched lens being framed in dark blue. The front seating fits three and three quarter inch figures very tightly but looks great with the amber windscreen. The rear gunner chair is a guaranteed death trap, but again, it's a fun additional seating area. Like the Grid Striker, we have nice chromed guns, but for some reason they're depicted in gold on the box, not very silver strikery. This is a straight drive vehicle with no remote control, so it has a simple forward and backward switch control which was not labeled correctly. The vehicle is either off, going forward or backward, depending on the switch position. The box claims that this vehicle can achieve a 45 degree climb. Even with assistance, this doesn't seem possible. When reduced to the Grid Striker's 40-20 degrees, the tank works fairly well but struggles to get going. I thought that backing up the 20 degree incline might give a better result based on the wheel position. No. So in general, this thing runs fairly well on a flat floor and can't handle as much as the box claims. Still a really cool looking vehicle though, a nice companion to the more elaborate Grid Striker. Well that's it for our second run of Masters of the Universe bootleg vehicles. Stay tuned for more, and as always, stay tuned for more Black Tub bootlegs.